This is Twit. Intel has released a patch for the remote co code execution in CPU active management technology. Remote management features that have been shipped with Intel processors for almost a decade contain a critical flaw that gives attackers full control over the computers that runs on vulnerable, vulnerable networks. That's according to an advisory published Monday afternoon by Intel. Now, Intel has released a patch for the vulnerability, which resides in the chipmaker's active management technology, Intel small business technology, and Intel standard manageability. Business customers who buy computers running vPro processors use those services to remotely administer large fleets of computers. The bug, and this is important, doesn't affect chips running on consumer PCs. The chipmaker has rated the vulnerability critical and is recommending vulnerable customers install a firmware patch. Now, security experts spent much of Monday assessing the real-world threat posed by the bug. A post published earlier in the day claimed, quote, every Intel platform from Nahalem to KB Lake had a remotely exploitable security, code, uh, security hole, end quote, that had gone unfixed for years. Researchers who parsed Intel's advisory, however, said the flaw could likely be exploited over the Internet only when Intel's AMT service was enabled and provisioned inside a network. Now, other researchers said the bar for unsupervised network attackers to succeed was probably even higher because Windows-based software was known lo as local manageability service would have to be running. So you have to have a number of things going for this to come into play. So the reality is that many organizations have not exposed the service processor like technology to publicly reachable networks but rather tend to deploy these on isolated management only networks. Now, Brian, I want to turn to you because I know you've been involved in deploying a lot of network components that are going to have these servers inside. How big a deal do you think this particular flaw is going to be out in the real world? Okay, so <clears throat> we let me stress, perimeter defense, kind of dead. So in theory, you should be running at least a zone technology so you can look at different things with your IDSs and IPSs. The management system apparently can be enabled either through a second NIC, I think. This is, this is one of the things I'm still digging for. But most likely, it's going to be enabled over the primary NIC on an enterprise workstation. So if you have access to a subnet or a segment, that has this turned on and you have an infected machine. So don't click on that URL. Um, you know, that ad, that ad from the Ethiopian prince, you know, I'm sorry, not, not going to help you. Um, yeah. Then there's some vulnerability. The issue is here is a lot of folks actually don't, aren't using the Intel AMT system yet. It's still fair. You know, even though it's a decade old, a lot of people are using other things, you know, like from Microsoft or whatever. And, you know, it's it it's a problem, but it's not a widespread problem because it's not that popular. Sorry, Intel. Now, I, I need to stress, this is not to be confused. This is a workstation, enterprise workstation vulnerability only. It does not affect servers because servers instead use things like IPMI, IDRAC, or ILO on a service processor, which is a daughter board on the computer that gives you things like, oh, gee, temp, temp in the CPU and, and GPUs, fan speeds, and things like that, and also gives you the ability for remote power off. Those are typically implemented on an isolated management-only network and thus they have not seen a lot of vulnerabilities. Their, their security is not great, but you, typically you're not foolish enough to implement this over a production network. So it is workstation only. It is the vPro series only. And considering like my organization, they're too cheap to buy vPro. So in theory, the University of Hawaii has very few vPro um, workstations on its network. Now, given what you've been saying about the vPro workstations, it does sound like this is the kind of thing that might be worrisome 
to an organization that has a lot of fairly high-powered workstations. So I'm thinking about companies in the aerospace industry, uh, certain parts of the government, um, maybe parts of the financial industry, say the quants, the people who are actually doing analysis. Is, is that the kind of application where you're likely to see the sort of platform that, that is vulnerable to this? Yeah, definitely. You know, VPro has been very popular with people that do lots of number crunching, lots of simulations and things like that. Um, yeah, anyone that's running VPro needs to do this patch and needs to do this patch soon. Um, the good news is the AMT platform does allow you to do remote updates. So as long as your network isn't compromised, you can push these updates out through the Intel management platform. Uh, worth doing. Um, just tell your people, leave your machine on on one particular evening so that your IT group can go and push these um, changes out. It's worth doing. Okay, so this is one that definitely can be ameliorated. It, it you, you can do mitigation on this. But let me quickly ask, since this has spread through so many different iterations of the chip, it indicates to me that this is something that was was pretty deep in the firmware. How disturbing is it to you that it took Intel yeah. this long to to deal with it? And frankly, looking at at how it happened, it was someone outside the company that found it. Uh, does that indicate that there could be more deeply seated problems and vulnerabilities in the firmware for these chips? Yeah, just. You know, look at what a CPU really is. <clears throat> We're talking about very, very low-level programming um, where the line is blurred between hardware design and software design. So in Intel's defense, things like that are kind of hard to find. Um, they're bad, though, is that they in this day and age, especially, come on, Intel, a decade-old bug? Um makes me kind of wonder if maybe the bad guys found it a long time ago and we just haven't heard about it. The researchers that did find this, <clears throat> you know, do say they only, when they went out and searched the internet, they only found about, I think they said 7,000 of these on the net. Um, so that's a good sign. Um, I would imagine a lot of these types of uh, machines are on isolated networks so that they can't be reached from the outside world. But, uh, you know, hmm, yeah, kind of disturbing decade to issue a fix, a uh, security hole that has been dragged across one, two, three, four uh, chip platforms. Ah, oops. Well, I know we all worry about zero day vulnerabilities. It seems like a zero decade vulnerability is much, much worse.